Hello and welcome to tonight's Top Gear. Well, this has to be the epitome of every young man's dream in the 60s and 70s. A blood red sports car, the sun shining and the wind in your hair. All you needed was Julie Christie in the passenger seat to complete the fantasy. Well, in the mid-70s, we started getting reports of a new sort of car that would change young men's aspirations and ambitions because Volkswagen launched the first Golf GTI, and that invented the hot hatchback. Well, on tonight's programme, we look at four exciting newcomers to the hot hatchback sector. Soon after the Golf launch in 1974, a group of engineers dropped a fuel-injected engine into one, convinced a sceptical management to build a limited number, and invited some journalists, myself included, to drive them round the Hockenheim race circuit. Thus was the GTI born, and to date they've sold over a million. Now, it wasn't long before other motor manufacturers started to cast envious eyes at this new market opportunity, and when Ford changed the Escort over from rear-wheel drive to front-wheel drive, they rapidly included an XR3 high-performance version. Now, this is the latest in a long line of XR3s, which became Britain's best-selling hot hatches. The new car looks very much like the RS2000, launched last year, though without the bonnet bulges. With five-spoke alloys, colour-coded bumpers and a distinctive rear wing, the shape looks understated and attractive. Ford have gone to great lengths to differentiate the XR3i from the standard Escort. You get this nice leather-rimmed wheel, a special instrument panel with very clear and easy-to-read dials, and these uh, lovely supportive wrap-round seats. I was a bit disturbed to find that Ford had fitted this test car with 600 quid's worth of very nice CD, cassette and radio player. For the most stolen car in Britain, that's quite a, a liability and to protect it, I noticed the radio units are code protected, the glass is engraved all the way round with the car's registration number and it's fitted with the Ford alarm. And that's just as well because the hot hatch accident and theft rates are truly appalling. The result? Premiums are sky high. A 25-year-old in London would have to pay around 2,000 a year to drive this car. At that rate, they'll soon only be feasible propositions for old men in Scotland. The XR3i has been a bit of a stranger in Ford showrooms since September 1990 when the new range of Escorts was launched. Now, Ford decided that they couldn't put out the XR3 with the old CVH engine. It was just too rough in comparison with the competition. They wanted to wait until this was in production at their Bridge End factory. It's the first production example of Ford's new twin overhead camshaft 16 valve Zeta family of engines. Now Ford's put an awful lot of money and effort into developing these engines which they say will power a full range of Ford cars right through the 1990s. First engine they designed entirely for catalyst fuel injected. In this form, it's 1.8 litres, 130 brake horsepower, or if you've got trouble with your insurance company, 105 brake horsepower. Now, obviously, we wouldn't attempt to assess the road holding and handling of such quick cars on the public roads. That's why we've come here to the test track to see how these cars perform in extremis. Now, you may argue that you wouldn't drive the car like that anyway, but there's always that situation that may arise where you need to take emergency avoiding action. And that's when you want to know how a car performs. <laughs> As soon as you get underway, you realise this is a, a seriously quick car, a maximum speed of around 126 miles an hour. So it's got to have the road holding and the braking to cope with that. And as you'd expect from the Escort's performance heritage, it certainly does. Violent lane changes are handled with poise and stability. And even near the limit, whoops, there's no traps for the unwary. If there is a criticism, it concerns the power steering. The car reacts more quickly than you'd expect to small movements of the wheel. So instead of holding a smooth, steady line through a bend, you end up making a whole series of tiny corrections. But that's a minor car overall. Road holding and handling are excellent.
Well, you have to say the new Escort XR3i is a very smooth and very quick car. I'm not convinced that the new Zeta engine package is all that marvellous. After all, we've had a lot of twin cam 16 valves around for a long time now. But the major point against the car is its price. It's almost £15,000. Now, last time we saw the XR3i, that was back in 1990, and it cost 11250 That's an awful lot of inflation, even if you do get more car for the price. Now, that price looks even less of a bargain when you compare it to the latest Volkswagen Golf GTI in three-door, eight-valve, two-litre form. This is almost £1,000 cheaper. As we've told you before, the new Golf is stronger and heavier, but those wide rear pillars do restrict rear three-quarter vision. At both front and rear, there are new crumple zones and the floor pan is strengthened. The doors get side impact protection beams and the whole car passes the tough new 1993 US crash standards that many manufacturers are struggling over. Why all the emphasis on safety? Well, VW researchers now say that it's the prime buying criteria for German drivers. Although the shape and interior of the Golf is new, it shares the same floor plan as the old Mark II. However, the suspension's been extensively changed. It's lower, front and rear, and the wheels are slightly further apart. This power steering is rather heavier than the old car. It all adds up to a, a feeling of weight and security when you're driving it on the road. The company also says that uh, the new setup has eliminated torque steer. That's a, an annoying condition in very powerful front wheel drive cars. When you change down and put your foot down, the car pulls from one side to the other. Doesn't happen in this one. With all this extra metal work and the attention to safety, you might think that the Golf has lost some of its original agility and sparkle. In fact, that's not true. This car reacts just as well to the steering wheel as that uh, original old Mark I did round the Hockenheim circuit. Even better, in fact, the GTI holds its chosen line to the inch and on high-speed curves it feels totally stable and unruffled. It's also very quiet at speed thanks to the aerodynamic shape and the efficient door and window seals. Obviously a lot of competition in the field, and if it's pure performance you're after, look no further than Nissan Sunny GTI. It's considerably quicker than the Escort, both in terms of maximum speed and acceleration. Costs roughly the same price. Now included in that price are anti-lock brakes, an expensive option on the Ford and the VW. I think it's little short of criminal for manufacturers not to fit anti-lock as standard to cars of this performance. Full marks to Nissan for doing so. They're also an option on Citroen ZX Volcan, but with similar performance to the others and a much superior ride comfort, it does represent excellent value for money at some £2,000 less than the XR3i.